Good evening and welcome to California Today. I'm David Lam, sitting in for Liang Jiang. Here's a preview of some of today's stories. The governor is proposing to keep the state's nuclear reactor open. He says doing so will help the state's gradual transition into clean energy. More water restrictions are hitting parts of Southern California. Some residents are being asked to stop all outdoor watering for two weeks. And there was some monkey business going on over the weekend. Law enforcement say a furry zoo inhabitant made an accidental 911 call. Former California Congressman T.J. Cox was arrested Tuesday morning by the FBI in Fresno. Court documents say that Cox has been charged with 11 counts of money laundering, 15 counts of wire fraud, one count of campaign contribution fraud, and one count of financial institution fraud. He has pleaded not guilty. Cox served as representative for California's 21st Congressional District from 2019 to 2021. Despite a push for green energy, the governor proposed a plan to keep the state's nuclear reactor open. He said it's in order to facilitate the transition to clean energy. But shutting the plant down altogether has met with bipartisan opposition. Governor Gavin Newsom proposed on Friday that California's last nuclear power plant at the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant continue running for up to 10 more years. His plan will keep the plant operational from anywhere until 2030 to 2035. Nuclear power will make up for gaps in the state's transition to more green energy. Diablo Canyon currently powers 9% of the state. Calls for closing the plant have mostly come from environmental groups, citing costs and potential natural disasters. But keeping Diablo Canyon open has received bipartisan support, attracting the backing of California Republicans and U.S. Department of Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm. Additionally, a joint Stanford-MIT study published last November showed that the plant would save the state billions of dollars if kept running until 2035. Newsom's announcement comes as he's pushed to make the state a model for green energy. Jim Phelps, a California utility expert, previously warned Epic TV of the state's pursuit of becoming green. He mentioned greenwashing. When states like California cannot produce enough green energy, they buy out-of-state brown energy and use legal loopholes to relabel it as green. Under the new proposal, one of Diablo Canyon's nuclear units would close in 2029 and the other as late as 2035. Daniel Hall, NTD News, California. A 12-year-old California boy was arrested Tuesday after stealing the family minivan and taking it on a wild ride that led police on a cat-and-mouse chase. According to the Fresno County Sheriff's Office, a 12-year-old boy was arrested on Tuesday for stealing the family minivan and taking it on a joyride, leading the police on a high-speed chase. The child driver rammed into an advertisement sign and refused to pull over. The boy speeded up to over 70 miles per hour, ran into stop signs, and drove on the opposite side of the road. Deputies tried several times to disable the minivan by setting up spike strips. Eventually, the minivan's tire was damaged after hitting one and the driver was forced to stop. The 12-year-old is booked into Juvenile Hall and charged with auto theft, evading police, and assault with a deadly weapon. Police later learned that the young boy took his family car and intended to drive to his old home in Sacramento. No one was injured. Daniel Hall, NTD News, California. As the California drought worsens, new water restrictions are hitting part of the state. In Southern California, Los Angeles residents have been asked to stop all outdoor watering for two weeks. Entity's Bill Thomas explains why the cities are asking this of their residents. More than 4 million Los Angeles County residents will be asked to suspend outdoor watering for 15 days next month while the Metropolitan Water District, or the MWD, repairs a leak in a water pipeline. The repairs will take place between September 6th and September 20th. The shutdown will impact residents in the cities of Beverly Hills, Burbank, Glendale, Long Beach, Pasadena, San Fernando, and Torrance. L.A. County residents in the Central Basin Municipal Water District, Foothill Municipal Water District, Three Valleys Municipal Water District, and West Basin Municipal Water District will also be impacted. Earlier this year, officials say they found a leak in the 36-mile Upper Feeder Pipeline, which delivers water from the Colorado River to Southern California. The pipeline has been running at reduced capacity after a temporary repair while officials designed a more permanent solution. 
Brent Yamasaki, Systems Operations Manager for the MWD, said, We need to make this urgent repair to ensure this infrastructure can continue serving Southern California in the immediate term and for years to come. And we don't take this call lightly, but it is what is needed at this time. Prior to the shutdown, officials recommend delaying new plantings until after September 20th, avoiding fertilizing lawns and plants, and turning the sprinkler timer off on the evening of September 5th. Residents can view a map of affected areas and learn more information by visiting mwdh2o.com slash shutdown. Bill Thomas, NTD News, Los Angeles. A California man has been arrested for scamming military families in the two major state university systems. He is accused of posing as a contractor for veteran affairs and stealing over half a million dollars. Don Azul from Los Angeles has been arrested for multiple counts of grand theft, identity theft, forgery, and other crimes. The criminal complaint states that Azul posed as a contractor for the California Department of Veteran Affairs, or CalVet. He defrauded over 40 families this way. Azul targeted and manipulated ineligible families to pay for counterfeit letters from CalVet that would waive tuition costs for qualified dependents of military members. Unaware that the letters were fake, many California universities accepted the letters and waived the fees. In a press release from Attorney General Rob Bonta, he said, It is nothing short of despicable to prey on veterans' family members and take advantage of their college dreams. Bonta also said that his office will continue to work with state and local officials to investigate and prosecute schemes aimed at defrauding service members and their families. A Southern California military base delayed the test of an Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, or ICBM. They said it was to avoid stoking recent military tensions across the Pacific. According to the U.S. military, it carried out a test of a Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missile from Vandenberg Base in Southern California on Tuesday. The military said the test was delayed so as to not escalate tensions as China saber rattles near Taiwan. The Chinese regime carried out live fire drills in the Taiwan Strait after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited the self-ruled island. The military said in a statement that the test showed, quote, the readiness of U.S. nuclear forces and provides confidence in the lethality and effectiveness of the nation's nuclear deterrent. About 300 such tests have occurred before, but they were not the result of any specific global event. Knott's Berry Farm announced this week that it will be extending its newly implemented chaperone policy to include all upcoming events for the annual Halloween-themed Knott's Scary Farm. That comes after recent fights at the park have led to heightened security. Entity's Bill Thomas tells us more. Knott's Berry Farm announced this week that it will be extending its newly implemented chaperone policy to include all upcoming events for the annual Knott's Scary Farm. The policy for the Halloween event requires any guest under 18 years old to be accompanied by a chaperone who is at least 21 years old. The rule was imposed on July 22nd after a fight broke out of the park, forcing it to close early. At least three people were injured in the fight, two of which were taken to a hospital. Initially, the policy applied to Fridays and Saturdays, but was eventually extended to include Sundays. Chaperones must show a valid photo ID with the date of birth and be available by phone throughout their visit. Each chaperone can accompany up to three minors, and they must remain with them during the entire visit to the park. Minors found in the park without a chaperone will be removed, according to Knott's officials. The park also has implemented a bag policy, which restricts guests from bringing bags over a certain size. That's 6.5 by 4.5 by 2 inches into the park. Bags include purses, backpacks, and diaper bags, and all approved bags are subject to search before entry. Not Scary Farm, the popular Halloween-themed event, runs from September 22nd through October 31st on select nights. Bill Thomas, NTD News, California. Cops usually have a prime suspect, but in this case, it's a primate suspect. That's after a seeming prank call to 911 may have instead come from a little furry zoo inhabitant. The San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Office believes to have solved who was behind a mysterious call to 911 on Saturday night, a little capuchin monkey. In a social media post, the Sheriff's Office said the call disconnected and dispatchers tried to call and text back. There was no response so deputies were dispatched to investigate. The address turned out to be the Zoo to You near Paso Robles, but the deputies found no people in the facility who could have made the call. 
they finally deduced that a capuchin monkey named Root had apparently picked up the zoo's cell phone. In a post to Facebook, the department wrote, We're told capuchin monkeys are very inquisitive and will grab anything and everything and just start pushing buttons. They added that, But you really can't blame her. After all, monkey see, monkey do. We're going to take a short break, but here's a look at what we've got for you coming up next. There's an Italian castle in California. In a special report, NCD's Eileen Ng hears why the owner built it and how he did it. And the Oakland Zoo has a new addition to the family, a southern poodoo. This species is the world's smallest deer. That and more on California Today. It's not every day you find a castle in California, but did you know there's one in world-renowned Napa Valley? And today's Eileen Ang hears a story from the owner who built it. A 13th century Tuscan-inspired castle sits on a hill in Calistoga, California. It's called Castello di Amorosa, or the Castle of Love. And the owner, Dario Satui, put a lot of heart into building it. First, you'll have a drawbridge, mm -hmm. and it really works. And we have a mechanism upstairs wow. for uh, taking up the drawbridge. And then the doors, all handmade, every nail, every spike, everything made over the open fire. Wow. And they weigh nearly a thousand pounds each. They're about eight, nine inches thick. And wow. um, we uh, brought them over from Italy. Satui is a fourth generation winery owner. He follows in the footsteps of his great-grandfather, who immigrated to San Francisco from Italy in 1882. Satui has always enjoyed old architecture, especially medieval and Renaissance architecture. In 1989, he took a hiatus to Italy and lived in Rome for six and a half months. On the weekends, he often drove out to the countryside in a rented car and went to abandoned homes, churches, palaces, and castles. I would bring a sketch pad, a measuring tape, a camera, and a hammer. A hammer to break in if I couldn't find a window that was open. I never stole anything. I always you know, put the door back with a nail. His fascination was much more simple at that time, with no intention of building his own real castle. His vision for this property here was to build a, a small 8,500 square foot Tuscan village style winery. But uh, as you know, um, he, got, he got a little carried away on this project. So now it's 136,000 square feet. Spanning three acres, the castle consists of nine levels with five underground and four above. There are five towers and 107 distinctive rooms, 95 of which are used for winemaking. To keep it as authentic as possible, he built it using the techniques people would have used centuries ago. He had up to 17 people chisel the basalt stones by hand, and he used grout, a mixture of lime, sand, and water, to hold the stone and bricks together like people did in the Middle Ages. Castles evolved over time. So if you look at the walls of an, a European castle, you can often see the history. For instance, they ran out of stone, of uh, this type of stone, so we had to, because 50 years later, the stone was exhausted from this quarry. So they had to go to another quarry and find stone, and that's why the stone is different. They shipped over 200 containers of materials, mostly bricks, from Italy, Austria, and Romania. In total, about 850,000 old bricks were shipped from Europe. Some of the stones were also from Napa. One of his favorite rooms in the castle is the Great Hall. The frescoes on the walls provide a glimpse into the centuries-old Italian lifestyle. So here, the ruler would hold court. He would adjudicate um, disputes. Um, he would try to impress and, and, and put fear into his neighbors because of his richness, his power. Here they would eat, here they would have their festivities. Satui built a church in the castle because people in the Middle Ages were very religious. He had an Italian artist paint the frescoes. This, believe it or not, is um, a depiction of the seven deadly sins. 
gluttony, jealousy, so forth. And it's a copy from a, the main church in San Gimignano in, in Tuscany. But a lot of people get offended by this. But this is what the Catholic Church was telling the peasants and others what was going to happen to them if they committed any one of the seven deadly sins. Another favorite room is the 12,000 square foot grand barrel room, which is temperature adjusted to age wines. The ceiling is 14 feet tall and has 40 ribbed cross vaults. The Romans not only invented the brick, they invented the cross vault. The cross vault was meant to distribute the weight to the columns or to the walls so you could put weight up above the cross vault. Other features include the main tasting room, a deep well, an armory, and even a torture chamber. The knight's room, among others, serves as wine tasting rooms. <coughs> there is a farm on the side of the castle with goats, chickens, emus, and more. What he's created and what he wanted to create was a sense of family, a sense of community, and uh, recreating what he experienced at his great-grandfather's winery in San Francisco. This year is also the castle's 15th anniversary since it opened to the public in 2007. Tours and wine tasting at the castle can be scheduled online. Eileen Ang, NTD News, Calistoga, California. A California zoo has a new baby deer, and it's as tiny as can be. The species is the world's smallest, standing less than two feet tall when fully grown. Here's a look. The Oakland Zoo has welcomed a tiny newborn southern poodoo, the world's smallest deer. The mother poodoo, Riley, gave birth on August 7th. According to the lead zookeeper, Riley had been on an injectable form of birth control, which does wear off over time. We had a feeling that it might be coming. She was looking a little bit heavier. Um, but uh, midday on Sunday, we, which was actually me, I was passing by the exhibit and looked over and saw her uh, doing some movements that looked very much like she was in labor. The zoo keeps some animals on birth control to give zookeepers more opportunity to observe and learn about the species prior to its breeding. The poodoo is a relatively new animal at the Oakland Zoo, so zookeepers want it to be ready and have a safe habitat prepared for the species when they did begin to breed. I think it is very high up there in the cuteness factor. Um, compared to some of our other animals, definitely. I have enjoyed these guys as soon as they got here. I've enjoyed them so much. Uh, they've been very comfortable being out in the open and visible, which is wonderful, especially for a small deer species, which, you know, deer generally want to hide. Um, but these guys have been really comfortable being out in the open. I mean, as evidenced by her giving birth out in the open, we had guests who were watching when it happened. Um, and I think they're just adorable. I think they've got wonderful little faces, great little personalities. They're just inquisitive and yeah, I love them. According to the zoo, southern poodoos reside in temperate rainforests and deciduous forests. They're also found in southern Chile and southwestern Argentina. The dad does not seem to care too much about the baby, which is not abnormal. Um, he was more interested in mom afterwards. Um, and mom's being great, being very attentive to the baby and um, making sure it's nursing, making sure it's staying safe and hidden places around the exhibit. So far, everything has been normal for the newborn, which has yet to be named. The average weight of an adult poodoo deer weighs between 15 to 30 pounds and stands 14 to 18 inches tall. Now to NCD's Thomas Christian for an update on sports. Welcome to the NTD News Sports Roundup. I'm Thomas Christian, taking you through the wide world of California athletics. 
AP put out their list of six key transfers to watch for this college football season. And squarely at number one is new USC signal caller Caleb Williams. And for good reason, Williams isn't exactly your typical transfer. Rather than adapting to a new coach and an entirely new system, Williams followed Lincoln Riley from Oklahoma to USC. So he's playing for the same coach, albeit at a different school. Williams believes that should help him build off the momentum he established last year. He took over as the Sooners starting quarterback midway through the season over Spencer Rattler and threw for the most yards and touchdowns of any true freshman in school history. Williams' status as a quarterback transfer isn't unusual at all, even if his circumstances are rare. The NCAA rule changes allowing players to transfer without sitting out a full season have led to dramatic changes at the game's most important position. Five of the top 13 quarterbacks in the 2020 class, according to 24-7 Sports, have changed schools. Utah's Jaquindon Jackson, UNLV's Harrison Bailey, UCLA's Ethan Garbers, Nevada's Sean Illingworth, and Nebraska's Chubba Purdy. Williams is the second highest ranked quarterback in college right now, behind Texas's Quinn Ewers, according to 24-7 Sports. Brandon Crawford smacked a two-out, two-run home run off Ian Kennedy in the ninth inning, allowing San Francisco to steal a walk-off win over visiting Arizona. It was his second home run versus Kennedy in his career. John Brebbia, who pitched a scoreless top of the ninth, was credited with the win as the Giants earned their fifth consecutive victory. San Francisco starter Jakob Yunus yielded one run in seven innings. Kennedy took the loss. Christian Walker homered and Merrill Kelly threw seven shutout innings, but it wasn't enough for the Diamondbacks. Giants 2, Diamondbacks 1. Backup catcher Nick Forte went 3 for 4 with two solo homers and three runs, leading host Miami to a victory over San Diego. Miami native Manny Machado led San Diego with three RBIs, but the Padres, who still lead the race for the third and final National League wildcard playoff berth, have lost two straight games, both to Miami. Marlins reliever Alicia Hernandez blew a seventh inning lead, but still got the win. Dylan Floro worked out of a two-on, no-out jam in a scoreless ninth to earn his third save. Marlins four, Padres three. Victor Caratini hit a two-run single with the bases loaded in the 11th inning to give Milwaukee a walk-off victory over visiting Los Angeles. The Dodgers scored a run in the top of the 11th before Caratini capped the rally in the bottom of the inning against Craig Kimbrell. Brent Suter earned the win despite allowing Justin Turner's RBI hit in the top of the 11th. LA's Chris Taylor preserved a 3-3 tie in the 10th with a sensational leaping grab of Andrew McKitchen's drive to right center with two runners on, ending the inning. Brewers 5, Dodgers 4. And that's all for the NTD News Sports Roundup. I'm Thomas Christian, and thanks for tuning in. That's all we've got for you tonight. We'd like you to join us again on California Today every weekday at 8.30 p.m. Make sure to check out our broadcast on our California Today webpage. You can find it at ntd.com slash California dash today. You can also find all of our top latest clips there, ready to share with friends and family. Send us a message on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, or through our email, california.today at ntd.com. I'm David Lamb, sitting in for Liang Jing. Have a wonderful evening.